Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla and on this week's video I've got a really important question to ask. Should I keep this car? And before you think I'm going mad, let me just put a bit of context into it. I've had that car now for just over a year and a half and I tend not to keep them for more than two years. Genuinely, even when I was on company cars, they tended to revolve around quite a bit. So there is a real question to ask about, should I keep it or not? And that goes for the other car in the family as well. So there have been a few appearances on other videos of our absolutely ancient petrol powered Hyundai i30 that almost nearly went in the bin this time but has just about scraped through another MOT so we get it for another year oh joy but the Tesla genuinely I'm not quite sure or haven't been quite sure what to do but here is the plan I'm going to keep that car long term so if you want to stick around on a channel where somebody basically buys a Tesla and runs it and keeps running it and goes out of warranty and starts not worrying about the battery and it doesn't set on fire and the range doesn't drop to 20 miles stick around because I'm going to keep this car for a long long time so as part of the review of how we're going to do this there's quite a lot of video content that I can actually shoot because the way I see it there are five different categories of things that I'm going to need to think about and worry about and talk about with regards to running a Tesla in the long term so the obvious first thing to talk about is the warranty so this car comes with a four-year 50,000 mile warranty for the car the battery pack gets a much longer warranty than that and genuinely I'm not concerned about it but for the car given that I've already done 31,000 miles I'm already more than halfway through so I'm going to have to consider what extra warranty you can get Tesla used to do an extended warranty I'm not sure that they still do I know that I could book a pre-warranty expiry service with somebody like Cleveley Mobile and they will come and have a look and tell me what he's doing on it I'll probably do that what we have had to do if you see my other videos is spend a thousand pounds getting a headlight replaced because I managed to get a stone smashing its way into it and filling it with water in a way which was comedically funny although not on the wallet so a few bills like that might start to seem a little bit expensive but let's be honest probably not as expensive as chopping the thing in and replacing it with another one so how much are parts going to cost you hear lots of things in the press about how there are no parts available for EVs Tesla aren't as bad as some others don't buy BYD as an example but it's still a consideration and the second one on the list is servicing so far this car has had no servicing at all and the great thing about Tesla is that unlike some other legacy car manufacturers they don't have a service schedule where they charge you a silly amount of money to check a whole load of things that your car doesn't have so this car so far has had no money spent on servicing and that is something that quite frankly I'm expecting to continue for a little while once it gets to two years I think I'm supposed to change the air filter or something like that but otherwise in terms of other things the brakes are absolutely fine because it uses one pedal regenerative braking the suspension is absolutely fine and it's not got all of the mechanical gubbins that a piston engine car has so there's no need to keep fiddling and fettling with them unlike this thing which has had quite a bit of money spent on it to keep it going the third one is consumables and I think the biggest thing on this car in terms of consumables are going to be tires now these are the OEM tires which are the summer Hancocks that it came on and quite frankly they are absolutely past it now and are definitely getting changed in the very near future I live in God's own Scotland and that means we have weather so we're definitely going to go on to all season tyres my only toss up at the moment is to go Michelin Cross Climate 2 or Goodyear Four Seasons Vectors and I'm honestly not sure which one I'm going to do let me know in the comments what you think the thing to note about tyres 
is they are not cheap. You need to find them on a deal somewhere because although I'm only on the 19 inch wheels, they still come on 255, 45, 19 on a W speed rating. And that is not the most common of tires, which makes them a little bit expensive. Although, to be fair, I've done 31,000 miles. The fronts have still got, you can't really see, but there is quite a bit of wear left on those. The only problem is because I didn't rotate them, the rears haven't got quite a bit of wear left on them and basically are done. So if I'd rotated the tires, I could have got 40,000 miles out of them, maybe more. I'm definitely going to rotate them coming up once I get new tires on because as I understand it, and I've only just spotted this, Tesla will come out to me, rotate the tires and only charge me something like 40 quid which is a decent deal. Okay, for the next bit, we have come inside because I think point number four is obsolescence. Now, this is gonna sound slightly crazy in a car on a 2022 build where it's supposed to be the height of modernity, and it is, but this is already out of date. So if you've seen my video of the Model 3 Highland, this interior, has already been updated with the red LED strip thing that runs around, but hey, you don't necessarily need that, but also ventilated seats, which would be quite nice, and a few hardware updates. From a software perspective, there's literally nothing to concern yourself about. This car will keep having software pushed over the air on a regular basis, and basically it will give you constant updates as I've had recently, minor fixes, security improvements, adaptive high beams. They were just switched on. How many cars get it where you have whole new features just switched on? So Tesla are always going to be pushing new software out. It's just a question about whether the hardware suddenly starts to feel a bit out of date. Then of course we come to the fifth and probably the biggest one, the one that has had some people shouting at the screen ever since I mentioned keeping the car long term, and that is the battery. So this car is a Model Y long range built in Shanghai, and it has got the long range battery pack, which means it has got 82 and a half, I believe, kilowatts uh, hours of total and 75 or 78, depending on who you read, of usable. And one thing we're going to have to do is do a battery condition test in a future video. But the warranty on the battery is much, much, much longer than the car. So I get four years and 50,000 miles with the car. I get eight years and 120,000 miles with the battery pack. Now, here's the thing. There is a huge amount of FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt, pushed about with regards to EV batteries saying they're going to either set on fire or they're going to have three miles of range or both. None of those things are true. So I don't have any particular concerns about the ability of this car to last in the long term. And the battery, although the battery is the most expensive bit of the car, here is the point. Even if you get to the point where your battery has dipped below the 70% limit um, in terms of usable energy versus new. If it's within eight years of 120,000 miles, which okay, in my case is probably more like six years, but Tesla will sort the battery out for free. If you actually have to do a battery repair, there are more and more and more and more services now doing this where they will literally scan the battery pack, find the cells, not the whole pack, the cells that are the problem and replace those. And worst case scenario, if you needed a new battery pack, well one, you're not buying a new one, you're buying a refurbished one, and two, you are part exchanging this battery pack under my bum for the replacement because even when these are damaged, they are not worthless and all of the people who keep saying they are worthless really need to get a hold of themselves. So I actually think it's a reasonable risk and compared to some of the cars that I've had previously and all of the faults that they've had going forward, this car doesn't have a gearbox, doesn't have uh, an EGR 
thing to get clogged up. Doesn't have a dual mass flywheel to go pop. Doesn't have a clutch. Doesn't have uh, fancy electronics managing lots and lots and lots of individual moving parts containing explosions. Doesn't have, doesn't have, doesn't have, doesn't have. And what's more, again, a load of nonsense is said about how long the tires and the brakes will last. The brakes on this are likely to last for 80,000 miles because they don't get used a lot and the suspension is designed to be able to hold them and doesn't actually get thrashed so the suspension is going to be in good condition. So I honestly think it's a risk worth taking but over to you guys in the comments in terms of what you think. Um, would you be tempted by the Model Y refresh, the Project Juniper or whatever it's called, as and when that comes out? I'm certainly going to have a look at it and I'll consider it. But my plan, as I'm recording this in April 2024, is that this car is a keeper. So if you want to see what it's like running a Tesla in the long term and you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so because it's completely free and that means you get to listen to me wittering on but also driving the car and having adventures and things every week so please subscribe if you haven't done hit the bell icon share the video to other people um there's a lot of people out there who are hugely skeptical about evs and how long they will last and listen to everything that they read in the daily mail or see on gb news send them in my direction let's have a conversation so, a lot of videos to come. The first one of my Keeping a Tesla long-term series is going to be tyres. Tyres is the first thing that I need to do and I will be doing in the very near future. If you want to see that video, again, make sure you subscribe and I will see you back here very soon on Just Get a Tesla.